15, paper one, question one again, so non-calculator, six and a fifth minus two and a third. So the first thing I'll do is I'll deal with the whole number parts. So I do six, take away two, and I get four. Now I can do a fifth minus a third. Common denominator is 15. One times three is three. One times five is five. Three fifths teams minus five fifteenths. Don't make a mistake, it's not two. It's minus two fifteenths. So when I get a negative answer, then my final answer, I started with four, so I drop down to three. Imagine again, I've got 15 fifteenths, 15 pieces of pizza. I take away two, so I've got 13 left over. So I've got 13 fifteenths left. One quick and easy way to think of that is, if you look at the denominator, 15, 15 take away, the numerator 2 is 13, so it's 13 fifteenths. It's been after 5 maths, 2015, paper 1, question 2. Solve algebraically the inequality, 11 minus 2 bracket 1 plus 3x is less than 39. So we need to expand the bracket and solve. So we've got 11 minus, and I usually use a box for expanding brackets, so we've got 1 plus 3x, or you can just do the normal way is less than 39. So I split that box into two, and I've got minus two, two times one, minus two times three x is minus six x. So taking that outside the box, we've got 11 minus two minus six x is less than 39. So we're expanding brackets. 11 minus two is nine, so I've got nine minus, nine minus six x is less than 39. Moving the nine over by taking away nine for both sides, and I've got minus 6x is less than 30. So now I need to divide by the number in front of x, divide them by minus 6, divide them by minus 6. That gives me x. 6 fives is 30, so that's minus 5. And here's one thing you need to remember. If you have to divide by a minus, then this flips the other way around. So it's x is greater than minus 5. The other thing you could have done is moved all your x's over to the right to keep them positive and you might have got an answer like minus 5 is less than x. But either way, x is greater than minus 5 and you're done there. If 15 paper 1 question 3 said AC is a tangent to a circle center O with point of contact B, D is the diameter, F is a point on the circle circumference, and it tells you 77 and it tells you 64, which is all in the diagram, and it calculates calculate BDF. So I usually just start by calculating whatever I can, really, and just work my way down. So let's have a look at what we've got. First of all, I can see a tangent and a radius, so I know that that's a right angle on that side, but so it is on that side, so these two angles add up to 90. So 90 minus 77 gives me 13 degrees. And then I can start working inside this triangle, so if that's a radius and a radius, I can just mark it on with little direct lines, so I know that the two angles at the bottom are the same size, so they're 13 each. So I can just mark that on. As soon as I've got two angles in a triangle, I can work out the third angle. So angles in a triangle up to 180, so 13 plus 13 equals 26. So I do 180 minus 26, which is 154. So I've got 154 in the middle. But now we've got a straight line, so angles on a straight line up to 180, so I'll just move to the next triangle. 180 minus 154 is 26. Now looking at this triangle, and knowing everything else, or trying to, well there's a radius and there's a radius, so I can mark that they're the same, and therefore at the bottom they're the same. So I can do 180 minus 26 is 154, and divide that by 2 to get 72. And then we can finally move on to our last triangle. A diameter making a triangle, so that is a right angle triangle. So I can put right angle here. And then we've got these three angles add up to 180. So I've got 64, 74, 84, 26 degrees. So we've got the one up here as well. And then we'll just check what's it asking for, BDF, B to D to F, so these two together, and then just write a little statement, angle B, D, F equals 13 plus 26, which equals 39. 
Now, going by the official mark scheme, you get a mark for getting 13 and a mark for getting 26 and a mark for adding them up. But I find the best strategy is just to find, try and find as many angles as you can and at the end, the angle will pop out. Unless it's obvious what you're doing. Being asked by Maths 2015, paper one, question four on expanding brackets. Multiply out the brackets, x minus four, x squared plus x minus two. Now, you, if you do use FOIL at school, you can't use FOIL for this because that only works for double brackets with two terms. So I always use a box so I don't have to think about FOIL. A box, I've got one big box. On one side of the box, I've got my first bracket, which is x minus four. And on the other side, I've got x squared plus x minus two. Now I can split up my box in between each term, and we're just times and everything together, so I'll put the answers in a different colour so it's clear. So we have got x times x squared, which is x cubed, x times x plus x squared, x times minus 2, minus 2x, minus 4 times x squared, minus 4x squared, minus 4 times x is minus 4x, and minus 4 times minus 2 is plus 8. Watch for minus times a minus. Now you should notice that boxes in this diagonal go together. So when I want to get them out the box, I've got x cubed. Then these two go together. So that's minus 4 plus 1 minus 3x squared. Then these two go together. So that's minus 4 minus 2, which is minus 6x. And then I've got plus 8 on the end. And I'm done there. Question question. This time it was a non-calculator for a change. Not often this happens, but it was a 2015 paper one question five national five maths exam. The standard deviation of one two 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 for one two 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 a is equal to root a. Calculate the value of a. Well, we just need to work out the standard deviation and, and, and ignore the rest of the question. So start part one. I'm going to work out my mean. I'll use this symbol for the mean. That's 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 8. And that all gets divided by 5 because there's 5 numbers. So being very careful, I've got 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 8. Start again. So being very careful, I've got 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 8 is 15. So I need to do 15 divided by 5 which is 3, and we've calculated the mean. That gets you a mark. And now we need to work out our standard deviation. So remember, from the start of the exam paper, that's the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1, all square rooted. Now, you should be looking that up at the start of the exam paper. Remember, there is an alternative formula, but I always use this one because that tells me my table. I do my x here, and then x minus x bar from the top, then x minus x bar again, squared, and that is in, also in the formula. x is just my numbers, which was 1, 2, 2, 2, 8. In the middle is x minus x bar, so I'm taking away the mean. So I need to take away 3 each time. So 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 8 minus 3. Don't worry about getting negative answers, it's completely normal. 1 minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 5. And the last one means to square them, times them by themselves. Ignore the signs when you do that, because when you times a negative by a negative, you get a positive. So I'm just going to do 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 is 25. And we get a total at the end. We need to add all these up. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So our total is 32. It's our key number because that now is the top of the formula divided by 4 because there was 5 numbers to start with, one less. So we can just straight away write down our standard deviation equals the square root of 32 over 4. Now, looking back at this question, it says it is equal to the square root of a. So that's close enough to the square root of a. But we can simplify 32 divided by 4. 4 eighths is 32. So that means that's the square root of 8. So to answer the question, square root of a, a equals 8. It's been asked by Maths 2015, paper 1, question 6 on trig graphs. Part of the graph of y was a sine bx, as shown in the diagram, with to find the values of a and b. So to find a, a is called the amplitude. It's the number in front of sine. To find the amplitude, it is how much space this takes up divided by 2. So that starts at 4 and it goes to a minimum of minus 4. That takes up 8. So for A, it's 8, but divided by 2, which equals 4. 
Often it is this number, but I always do this sum in case there's a plus C on the end. So A is 4, and then to get B, B is right in front of X, so that's how many graphs there are up to 360 degrees. So if it goes up to 360 degrees, job done, I just count them. 1, 2, 3. So B is 3, it's a simple one that. If they give you a try and trick you and see that that number is like 120, I just keep counting as if it goes up to 360 to get the answer. And we're done there. SB National 5 Maths 2015 Paper 1 Question 7 on quadratic graphs. The graph below shows part of a parabola with equation y equals x plus a squared plus b, so in completed square form. The minimum turning point 2 minus 4 is shown. Find the values of a and b. So let's do a little bit of work outside. Remember, the turning point can be given to you from completed square form. If I've got y equals x plus a squared plus b, then the turning point, remember, is equal to minus a, b. The sign changes on the, the a, but the b stays the same. So I'm just putting 2 minus 4 back in. So I've got 2 minus 4 as my turning point. So that is minus a equals 2, and b is minus 4. So that means that a is equal to minus 2, because minus a is 2. In other words, it's y equals x minus 2 squared minus 4. Turning point here is 2 minus 4, which is what we've got. So writing the answer in the right place, I've got minus 2 for a, and b is equal to minus 4. Right then, the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph. So the axis of symmetry is the point, the line that goes straight down here. Well, that happens at 2. So the axis of symmetry is just x equal to 2. And we're done there. National 5 Maths 2024, 2014. So I'll write paper 1, question 8. Find the equation of the line joining these points. So you see a pattern here. Does that go the same again? Find the gradient x1, y1, x2, y2, so we get 15 minus 5, 3 minus negative 2, that's 10 over 5, which is 2. Equation of a straight line, y minus b is mx minus a. Pick a point, 3 and 15 is the most easiest one because they're both positive, so a is 3, b is 15, y minus 15 is 2x minus 3, expand the bracket, y minus 15 is 2x, take away 6. Add 15 to the right-hand side then, because it's negative, so it becomes positive when it moves over. Y equals 2x plus 9. 15 take away 6 is 9. Next we answer 5, 20, 15, paper 1, question 9 on trig graphs. Write the following in order of size, starting with the smallest. We've got cost 90, cost 100, and cost 300. So we need to kind of justify our answer here. There's two ways you could do this. You could use a cast diagram, or you can draw a graph. I think drawing a graph is the easiest way. So I'll show you both ways anyway. Drawing a graph. So I'm just trying to draw the sketch a cost graph. So that's a cost graph that you should all know. And it goes to 1 and minus 1. And then it goes 90, 180 at a turning point, 270 here, and 360 at the end. So that's our x and that's our y. So now just kind of noting on this graph where roughly 90, 100, and 300 is. I'll use a different colour. So there's 90. I'll call that one 90, using a different colour for 100. Well, 100 is at past 90, so we could say 100 is about there. And then for our last one, let's just use white. 300, well, that's past 270, but before 360, so we could say 300 is about there. So essentially, we're saying that the cost of 90 is equal to 0. The cost of 100... We don't know its exact value, but it's definitely negative. In the cost of 300, we don't know its exact value, but it's obviously positive. So that means that an order of size from smallest to biggest, cost 100 comes first, because that's negative, then cost 90, because that's zero, and then cost 300, and we're done there. Now, let me just show you the other way using the cast diagram. If you wanted to try it with a cast diagram, you would draw your cast diagram like this. And you'd realise that, well, 90 is in the first quadrant, so cost 90 would be here. Um, 100 is after 90, so that's in the second quadrant. And 300, well, that goes 90, 
1AA, 27A. So 300 is here. And the other thing you would have to tell is that the cost of 90, you would have to know, is equal to zero. But you'd also know that this is positive and this is negative, so you therefore you get your zero, positive and negative from the cast diagram. It's been asked by Maths 15 people on question 10 on median and quarter wage. Ten couples took part in a dance competition. The couples were given a score in each round, and here's the scores for the first round. It says calculate the median and semi interquarter range. So if you did National Five Maths this year, we changed it from semi interquarter range to interquarter range. Semi just means divide by two, but you'll be not dividing by two for your exam because it's just interquarter range. Unless you're doing apps, then it's semi interquarter range. So just bear that in mind. But let's get into the question. So ten couples took part. Find the median and semi interquarter range. So we need to put the numbers in order from smallest to biggest. 12, 16, 17, two 18s. Let's just mark these off as we go. And then after 18, we've got 21, and then 22, then 26 and 27. 27 that we've seen. And hopefully that's we got them all. So the median is the one in the middle when you put them in order. So just going in, we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one. So it's in the middle of these two. So there's our median there. So I'll just take a note of that. Our median is going to be here. So it's in the middle of two numbers. So in the middle of 18 and 21 is 19.5 because it goes up three. Or the other way to do it is add them together and divide by two. Then you would still get 19.5. Now your quartiles, it's just the middle of the first half of the first quartile and the middle of the other half of the upper quartile. So one, two, three, four, five, the middle number 17. So that's quartile one. <coughs> and one, two, three, four, five, the middle number is 26 of them. So that's quartile three. So writing down our answers, median is equal to 19.5. And the semi interquartile range is just Q3 minus Q1, but you need to divide by two for semi. You don't need to divide by two if it's just interquartile range. So we've got 26 minus 17 divided by two. 26 minus 17 is nine, divided by two is 4.5. And we're done there. Part B, in the second round, the median was 26, and the same interquartile range was 2.5. Make two valid comparisons. So comparing the median or means we use on average, comparing interquartile ranges or standard deviation as variation. So let's compare the medians first. We got 19.5 for round one. We got 26 for round two. So on average, the scores were higher in round two. So for part B, we just say that. On average is your keyword. You miss that, you don't get a mark. Scores were higher. In round two, since and we'll write why twenty six is bigger than nineteen point five. So there's one statement. The second statement is about the same interquartile range. <coughs> <coughs> round two it was two point five. Round one it was four point five. So for part the second statement, the scores were more varied in round one since 4.5 is bigger than 2.5 and we're done there okay, simultaneous equations let's start off with just solving them algebraically so given two equations how do we solve them so we've got two equations here the game and the goal is to make either the x is the same or the y is the same sometimes you'll have to times by one of the equations just by a number and sometimes you'll have to times them both in this case i'll have to times them both so i'm going to make the x is the same you could make the y is the same I want to make the x is the same. If I times the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 3, I'll get 6 in both cases. So times in this by 2 and times in this by 3. So we can write our new equations 6x plus 4y equals 34. 
and our bottom one is also 6x plus 15y equals 12. So I'm going to call this equation 1 and this one equation 2. And just try to keep things positive, I'll do 2 take away 1. Now, if the signs in front of the, the, the thing you're eliminating are the same, you take away. And if they're different, you would add. So these are the same, so we're going to take away. So 2 take away 1, in other words. So that gives me four, 15 minus 4 is 11. Why? And 12 take away 34, being very careful here. 12, 22, 32 is minus 22. Not positive 22, because remember we're doing 2 take away 1. So then dividing through by 11, y is minus 2 for our first solution. But we now need to find our second solution. So given that y is minus 2, we can just substitute that into any equation that we've already used. So I'll just use the top one, 3x plus 2y equals 17. So we know that 3x plus 2y equals 17. So we can just do 3x plus 2 times minus 2, because y is minus 2, equals 17. 3x take away 4, and then solve the equation. Add in 4, 21, 17 plus 4 is 21. So we get our final answer is x equal to 7 for our second mark. It's been answered by Maths 2015, paper 1, question 12 on algebraic fractions. Well, just to simplify this algebraic fraction, so we've got a quadratic on top and bottom. Most of the time, you either factorise the top or the bottom, or both of them sometimes. We're going to factorise both. So let's look at the top first. x squared minus 4x. Well, that's common factor. So that's x bracket x minus 4. And then our bottom bit is x squared plus x minus 20. Well, that's a trinomial, so that's double brackets because there's no common factor. So I'm looking for double brackets. And the method here is if it's just an x squared, then it's x and x. And then it's two numbers at times to make 20, but add to make 1. So you can make a little table for yourself if you want. 20 and 1. So 1 and 20 make 20, but they don't make 1. 2 and 10 make 20 when you times them, but they don't make 1. 4 and 5 make 20 when you times them, and they make 1. Now, I'm trying to make minus 20 and plus 1. So I'll take a note of that here. So how do I make plus one from five and four? Well, I have plus five and I have minus four. Just a quick check. Five times minus four is minus 20. So I get plus five and minus four in the bracket. <coughs> so now we can simplify it. We just say x over x minus four on the top over x plus five, x minus four. And now we've got the same thing top and bottom, x minus four. So they can just be cancelled like this to leave x on the top and just x plus 5 on the bottom. Do not try and cancel the x's here. That's not going to work. That is you finished. You're done. Stop. It's been answered by Maths 2015, paper 1, question 13 on rationalising the denominator. Express 4 over root 8 with a rational denominator. Okay, there's a couple of ways to go here. You can either simplify the root 8 first or simplify when you're finished. I'm going to do it when I'm finished. So I'm going to start off with 4 over root 8. And you always times by the denominator over itself. So that gives me 4 root 8 on the top, and root 8 times root 8 is just 8. Now we can simplify these fractions. 4 over 8 is a half, so that's 1 root 8 over 2. But now this root 8, you need to check, is that simplifiable? So at the side, root 8, I'm looking for two numbers at times to make 8, but one's a square number, 4 times 2. So that gives me square root of 4 is 2, 2 root 2. So our third becomes, well, I'll just write this again, 1 root 8, root 8 over 2 we had. Well, root 8 is 2 root 2 now, and that's over 2. So now again, these are outside the root, so they can be simplified. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that just gives me 1 root 2, and we're done there. Okay, laws of indices. SQ National 5 Maths 2015, paper 1, question 14. Evaluate 8 to the power of 5 thirds. Now, it's a non calculator question, so we're going to have to change it into a form that we can work on. So, 8 to the power of 5 thirds from the laws of indices. That is a root. And what type of root is it? Well, the bottom number tells us cube root. And the 8 and the 5 go along underneath the root. So, it's the cube root of 8 to the power of 5. 
So I can either cube root first or after the fact. Might as well do it first because 8 to the power of 5 is a hard sum. So the cube root of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that gives me 2 to the power of 5 still. Because it's just the cube root of 8 I've done. 2 to the power of 5. That's 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. And we're done there.